how to pray for people to experience God anytime. Actually, we have done it many times uh, during these few days with Pastor Nicholas and uh, we went to his church and different churches and we saw how people experience the Holy Spirit. He always comes when we open our heart to Him. You know, that's one thing about God. He always comes when we open our heart to Him. That we can all carry the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Don't think that you cannot. Even children. You know, there are children, little children. They pray for people. They're full of the power of God. And it can happen to children. And the children here too. Can, uh, it, it can happen. I'd like to first share what happened to me in 1998. How I started to go into the work of the Holy Spirit. At that time, I've been a pastor for 15 years. And for the 15 years, I find that it's hard to raise up people's spiritual life. I brought many people to Christ, but their spiritual life is not very strong. And I have not been able to bring anyone to go into ministry. But after that, I brought many people to go into ministry. And now actually, in Hong Kong, I'm training people to serve God. And these are lay people, but they, will, you know, they have the goal to serve God as ministers, to be missionaries, to go to different places, uh, to uh, preach the gospel and bring up people's spiritual life. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it happened in 1998 when I went to a meeting and there was an evangelist who laid hand on people. And when the moment he laid hand on me, I felt power like electricity zoom into me. Very powerful, very strong. At the same time, I experienced great love that I never experienced. Just suddenly the love came into my heart and I cried for a long time. I felt like, oh, I'm being loved. That God is so precious, so close. At the same time, I felt burdens go away. At the same time, I smell a sweet aroma as if from heaven. I, I lay there, it feels like in heaven. And I said, I didn't know I can have such a close relationship with God. It totally opened my mind that the relationship is not as shallow as before, but very, very deep. So from that day on, I spent a lot of time praying, and, and also throughout the day, I would keep loving God, keep praying God, to God, and even now, when I'm talking to you, I can be loving God at the same time, and I can feel the power of God go through me. And one day, uh, I cried to Jesus, after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I cried to Jesus, Lord Jesus! <laughs> the moment I cried out, I felt power went through me, just like now. And later, you know, I said, that's great, I can immediately uh, experience the response of God. And I kept crying, oh Lord Jesus, again the power came down. And then later, I experienced the joy of the Lord. And, and then every time I pray, the joy just keeps flowing out. And not just to me, I have brought the joy of the Lord to many people. Of course, the Holy Spirit does it through me, but He can do it too, through you. And you can do great things. Now, one of our uh, 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 sister who came, uh, she has come to a meeting for a long time, but her, she's kind of restrained. But on that day, we went to that church. And after I lay hand on a few people to demonstrate praying for people, and then I lay hand on her. And I felt a power enter her, and I felt her shaking. And then I looked at her, she was... In a way, it looks like she was trying to control her laugh. She was going to laugh. <laughs> At first, she was not free to laugh. And then later, she, she just kept laughing. She said, it just keep coming. So it happened to her, and I said, you have to keep it. And I described it. We, our heart is like a leaking cup. Yeah. The Holy Spirit comes in like water. But it will leak out. The, by the time you know, we pray, you experience the Holy Spirit. But after the prayer, you notice that the power begins to go down. And by the time we finish the meeting, you go out, you feel it goes down again. And then by the time you go home, or the next day, it's weaker. But if you keep having the good connection with God, then the Holy Spirit keeps coming, then you will not go down. The Holy Spirit will not go down. So that's something I've noticed. I have seen many people experience the joy of the Lord, and I said, keep praying. And then, a few weeks later, I, I saw them, and I said, how is it now? He said, no more joy. I said, what happened? Uh, how long do you pray every day? 
He said, a few minutes. I said, I told you already, it's not enough. <laughs> not just a few minutes. You pray for the whole day long and also at least concentrate in prayer for one hour or longer. Mm -hmm. You know, just pray for a few minutes to keep this uh, infilling of the Holy Spirit, which is a precious gift. Mm -hmm. Now, after that, you know, actually, another thought came to me in that meeting. When I saw this evangelist with power, there were thousands of people there in that meeting. And so many people experience the Holy Spirit immediately. And I said, if he can serve like that, I want to serve like that too. So another thought came to me, I want to serve like that too. I hope today you say, yes, I want to serve God like that too. Amen. And after that, I, uh, one, church, one of my church members asked me to pray for her. And I was surprised. I thought it would take a long time to build up the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the few people that were present there, they said that they experienced the power of God. So it opened my mind. I start to pray for many people. And many people experience the presence of God, the peace of God, the love of God, the joy of the Lord, repentance, uh, revival of spiritual life. And I said, this is really great. So my ministry totally became different. And then later, I, you know, I, God opened a way for me to go into the mission field. And when I went to the mission field, I tried to do what... I saw some revival meeting leaders did. How they led the people to love the Lord. Like uh, that day uh, we went to their church with Pastor Nicholas. That church, I want them to enter the presence. Uh, and also at the overnight meeting. In the overnight prayer meeting there. I want them to enter a strong presence of God. And they were all, you know, they uh, opened their heart. And what happened was a few people immediately experienced the power and they... You know, burst out. Uh, can you describe what you saw, Pastor Nicholas? Yeah, there was a, a number of testimonies. Joy, peace, but I think they did that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and evil spirit driven out. Yeah. And, and, and one person said, God spoke to her mm -hmm. and tell her not to carry the burdens. Mm -hmm. And I've seen things like this. And one time I prayed for the daughter of a, of a minister. And she lay on the floor for two hours. And after that, she says she went to heaven. And she saw Jesus. And Jesus told her to take out all, all the burdens in her heart to Jesus. And, and I have experiences like this all the time. And that is the promise of God that can come to you. It's not just for some people. So I hope when you hear this, you say, yes, I want it to happen to me too. And one day, I was leading a... Uh, service, pray, uh, preaching, and then I pray for some people, and I asked them, did you experience anything? And one woman jumped up and said, my back ache is healed. <laughs> and another woman jumped up, my shoulder ache is healed. And that was the first time I saw immediate healing. And then God opened my eye and said, you know, what happened at the time of Book of Acts will happen now, when we open our heart, if everyone have a close relationship with God and you know the Holy Spirit comes upon us when the Holy Spirit falls on us that we receive power to be His witness from Jerusalem to the end of the world the purpose is not just for enjoyment the purpose is for evangelism and also to teach them to obey everything Jesus has taught us to raise up spiritual life that is what Jesus wants us to do and if we have a heart to do that then you find your life will keep going up and in this process, God gave me all this wonderful teaching. And I thank God for that. It's not for me. It's God teaching me. Actually, when I experienced the Holy Spirit, I was in a, a weak condition. Not in a strong spiritual condition. It was God's choice, God's election, God's blessing that came to me and then blessed me. And I hope that when you hear this, you say, Lord, yes, I want that too. Now, I want to first talk about a few things about what the Bible has promised the Holy Spirit would do. And you can write down these verses because this method you can use for evangelism. Now, I want to say is soon after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I prayed for everyone who entered my church. And they were non-believers. When I lay hand on them, I noticed some power enter them. I felt the power. And I felt when I touched someone, I lay hand on someone, I felt like there's something between me and the person. There's some power going through that. 
And I asked the person, what have you experienced? And then they said, peace or burdens go away or joy or, or power or different experience. And then I said, God has blessed you right here. Do you want God to continue to bless you? And then they said yes. And then I told them, told them the gospel and then lead them to believe in Jesus. And that's how I started this experience God evangelism. I find that when people are willing that we pray for them, they can experience God. And I'm going to show you how that we can have this anointing too. But I first start with these Bible verses. Please write this down because you will need to use it. Use them when you do evangelism. First, in John 14, 27. John 14, 27. Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. Now some people said, this is what Jesus said, not the Holy Spirit said. Well, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one God in three persons. So what Jesus does, the Holy Spirit also does. What the Father does, the Holy Spirit also does. What the Holy Spirit does, the Father and the Son also does. Amen. Also do. So it's one, you know, when you said Jesus did it, the Holy Spirit also does it. Yeah. That, so one thing that many people experience is peace. One time I prayed for someone, and after I finished <coughs> the prayer, I asked her, I usually ask, because if I don't ask, they will forget what they experienced. What have you experienced? And then she opened her eyes and she said, Oh, you are still here. I said, where do you think I went? She said, I went to a different place. And it's so peaceful, so good. And then I opened my eyes, oh, I'm still here. She thought she went to a different place. That she was in just such a peaceful condition. That many people experience peace and burdens go away. And this is in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. You probably know this verse. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. All you who are weary and burdened, can come to me and I'll give you rest. That Jesus can take away the burdens. And there's so many people said they said, wow, my heart was, was burdened, and then the burdens went away. And then Psalm verse uh, chapter 16, verses 8 to 9. Here David talked about how he has a close relationship with the Lord. And then my heart is glad, my tongue rejoices, and my body will also rest secure. So he talks about his whole person became joyful. And then his body will rest secure. Here it talks about the blessing of God to the body. Now some people will say, well, God only blessed the heart, the spirit, not the body. But I will ask them, who created the body? Who maintained the body? Who blesses the body? Who heals the body? If God can do all these things, He can also come and bring comfort that our body can rest secure. This is what many people experience. They could experience a number of things. They feel like comfort coming to them. Uh, Sometimes I pray for people with heavy sickness. One time I prayed for someone with cancer, going through chemotherapy. When I talked to him, I, the first time I met him, he said, um, I, I'm in pain. Because of the chemotherapy, I'm in pain. And then I said, would you like to try, you know, I pray for many people and they get healed or they get better and they feel good. And and then he was willing, and then I prayed for him. And afterwards he said, I asked him what he experienced. He said, I felt great comfort come to my body. I did not feel the pain. Now I feel comfort. And then he went home, and he prayed the same way I taught him. And then he said, well, when I pray in Jesus' name, I also experience a comfort. So he told his two daughters, Jesus really can come to me and bless me. And later the, those two daughters also believed in Jesus and came to my church. So that's how real he is. I, there's so many people that you know, have different problems. Now one person was a drug addict. Now of course I want to help him to overcome the addiction. And I pray for him. And after the prayer he said, Wow, when you pray for me, it's more comfortable than when I took drugs. I felt better than when I took drugs. So I can tell drug addicts, you know, you can feel better without fee, yes. without charge, yes. and, experience, and experience change of your life. And you can have blessing to your whole life, then you won't feel misery after you take drugs, you know. People take drugs afterwards, they will feel misery. They, they will feel so bad about themselves, they, they feel that life is draining away, going away. So, God will bless our body. Some people feel comfort, and some people also feel the swaying of the body. Now, some of you might have experienced this too. When you pray, 
you feel the swing of the body. And what is the biblical basis for this? In Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, Revelation 1, 17, when John saw the glorified Jesus, immediately he fell down like a dead man. And in Acts chapter 9, when Saul, also called Paul, he saw Jesus, and he also fell down like a dead man. And when the soldiers tried to arrest Jesus and asked, Who is Jesus of Nazareth? And Jesus said, I am. And you know, that word he used actually is the, uh, the same word as Jehovah. Jehovah means I am who I am. That I am the one, in the past I am. In the present time I am. In the future I am. I am in the past, I am in the future. I'm in all eternity. I'm the eternal one. When Jesus said, I am, the soldiers fell down. And also in the Old Testament, uh, Daniel chapter 10, when Daniel saw the uh, visions, he fell down like a dead man. And also uh, in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, the last few verses, it talked about 120 priests, and they fell down. Uh, they could not stand to serve God. So, that's what happened when the power of God came strong. And then, for some people, uh, they, if the power doesn't come that strong, they sway. They sway. And I told people, falling down by cell doesn't do any good. But when you resist, then you start the work of the Holy Spirit. But if you just relax and let the power come upon you, and we usually have catchers, when they fall down, some people, when they fall down, when, when they receive the power that come upon them, some people, that, like the daughter of the minister, immediately went to heaven. And some people immediately start to cry or laugh, filled with joy of the Lord, that I've seen many times. So when we, you experience the Holy Spirit, don't resist, just relax. Mm -hmm. But not everyone fall down, it doesn't matter. You don't have to fall down. Mm -hmm. But if you feel the power, just let go. Mm -hmm. When you feel the peace and the comfort to the body and the peace to the heart, Remember that. And every time when you pray, go back to the same condition. Mm -hmm. So when you're at home, go back to the same presence of God. <laughs> the peace of God. Now, in the beginning when you do it, you may not have the joy as I have now. But one day you will have it. If you keep praying to God and then put down all your burdens, it will come to you. But remember this experience. And also, today when I pray for you, you will experience the presence of God that you can keep and then if you go home and pray more, then you carry the anointing of God and you can go and bless people more. Okay, another Bible verse, very important, Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. Isaiah 61, <coughs> 1 to 3. There it talks about the Holy Spirit is upon me to send me to preach the good news to the poor. So here is about preaching the good news. Mm -hmm. And this is actually the Old Testament Great Commission. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit comes upon us to send us to preach the good news. And then he also sent us to bind up the brokenhearted, to heal the brokenhearted. So that is inner healing. To heal the hurtfulness in the heart. To comfort all who mourn. And also the oil of gladness instead of sadness. And also to proclaim freedom for, uh, for the captives. Many people in this country and all over the world have sadness, depression, insomnia, family problems, all kinds of problems. And I pray for people with mental problems. And then suddenly they experience joy. They experience freedom. They experience the problem go away. And you can do that too. And for students, many stu uh, children have problems at home. When you pray for them, a number of them might cry. And the burdens, burdens come out. You ask them what has happened. And they might tell you what has happened. I've seen so many people cry, including children, women, Big adult men, big men, pray for them and they start to cry when the Holy Spirit touches them. So God is very real to bring inner healing. And then Mark chapter 16, beginning of verse 15. Mark chapter 16, beginning of verse 15. It talks about Jesus said, go to the whole, uh, all the nations to preach the gospel to all creation. And then he says that he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. And then in verse 17, signs will follow those who believe. Mm -hmm. You cast out demons in my name, 
and you lay hand on the sick and they'll be healed. Mm -hmm. So according to this verse, who can perform miracles? Is it pastors? All who believe. Yeah. Let me ask you, how many of you believe in miracles? Could you raise your hand? How many of you believe in miracles? Mm -hmm. Thank God. Okay, now the second question. How many of you have seen miracles when you pray for someone and miracles happen? Could you raise your hand? If you pray for someone and a miracle happen, could you raise your hand? Okay, a few, not everyone. Why? Because we haven't done it. Because we haven't used the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You'll be surprised when you follow God's instruction. Miracles will follow those who believe. And when you preach the gospel, I'll be with you always. And the Holy Spirit will come upon us and will receive power. So this is a promise for all people. Now some people always say, Pastor, please lay hand on me. I have a sick person. Please pray for him. They always ask the pastor to pray for him. But I want to tell you that everyone are supposed to do it. Of course you can bring people to your pastor, but we can first pray for them. And you'll be surprised that God can use you mightily. So this verse here promises us that we can have that power. We can have this power to bless people and pray for people. Okay? Now, these verses I just told you talk about the work of the Holy Spirit that we can all ex uh, experience. Now, and my next point here is talk about how we can have the strong anointing of God. How can we have this strong presence of God? I would go through this very quickly. First, hate sins. Say no to sins. So first is rejection of all sins because God hates sin just as we hate dung or urine. You like urine, you like the smell of it, you don't like it. God hates it. So when we sin, some people think, doesn't matter, I'll ask God to forgive me tomorrow. God will forgive, but there is a consequence of sin. One time in John chapter 5, there was a, 30, a man, 30 years, 8 years, could not walk. And then Jesus came and told him to take up uh, uh, his mattress and walk away. And then later Jesus saw him and said, Don't sin anymore, lest something worse will happen to you. That sin can bring something worse because sin will give in to Satan and give in to problems, family problems. A lot of people think yelling at the wife or husband or nagging the husband and, uh, or, or dislike someone doesn't matter. Every sin does matter. After I experience the Holy Spirit and see how God has used me, I really say no to all sins. And the way to say no to all sins is, at the moment the sinful thoughts appear in the head, we use these five steps to victory. You can write this down. Five steps to victory. First, aware. I'm aware of the sinful thought or negative thoughts or negative feelings or negative subconscious mind or negative behavior. First is aware. Second, destructive. Belief is destructive. Now this actually is the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit's way. It's, uh, the copyright belongs to the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is willing to share the copyright with everyone. I just copied it from God. This is what God does to us. He will remind us. And then we know it's bad. And the third is Bible. So use the Bible to respond to that problem. For instance, if I see a sexy woman, now it's a natural tendency for all men. When we see sexy women, we just attract it. And there are experiments to look at the pupil of the eye of a man. When they see a sexy woman, immediately the pupil opens up. But I know that this will destroy God's plan in my life. So immediately I will say no to the thought. Immediately I will turn away. Or sometimes I have to look at a beautiful woman because I'm praying for the beautiful woman. I will just look at her as a human being, not as a sex object. As a human being loved by God. So turn my thought from any kind of lust to say no to any kind of lust. And this can help many men because many men thought that there's no way to overcome the sins. But when we realize our life is so precious, God has a wonderful plan in our life, and then if we sin, we destroy it. Then people will have, some people will have the motivation. I hope more people will have the motivation when they know how much their life can do. What a great plan God has put in our life. Now, that is 
not part of the uh, uh, five steps to victory. You can write down uh, down below. Psalm 139, verses 16 to 18. Psalm 139, verses 16 to 18. There it talks about that. That all the days of my life, before one of them came to be, were written, has been written in your book. That our life is written up, the plan of our life is written in the book of life in heaven. And God wrote for every person to be a great person. Do you know that child? You can become a great person. God has the plan in your life to become a great person. Do you believe you can be great? That's great. But many children don't believe that. And many Christians don't believe that. Even many pastors don't believe that they can be great. They thought they would, they would just be an ordinary pastor. Now, great pastor doesn't mean you have a big, big congregation. It means you can really touch people's heart and change people's heart. And then these people will go and bless more people. So God has a wonderful plan. One day when we go to heaven and find it, Wow, God's plan is so great. How come I only live out so little? So many people live out very little of God's plan. If we have to go to heaven today, now, how would our book of life look like? How would our life look like? Are you satisfied with your life if we are to go to heaven today? Many, many people will say, I have lived a lousy life. I have not been diligent. I have not intentionally follow God. So I hope you see how precious God is, how precious is His plan. And also with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can do great things. And one day when we go to heaven, God will show you. This large crowd has been brought to heaven by you. This large crowd has been revived by you. And then they go and preach the gospel to more people. And they keep going, keep going. So many people were influenced by you. It can happen to you. So I hope you believe that. When you can pray for one person to experience the Holy Spirit, then you can pray for ten. Then you can pray for a hundred thousand, a, a thousand, ten thousand, and more. I pray for tens and thousands of people. I don't know how many people because I've led so many meetings. I, I, I pray for so many people and I've taught them, your life is very precious. If you're willing to live in the Holy Spirit with the power of God and have love of God for people, you can be great. So I hope that you realize how precious our life is. So destructive, the second point. Just now, the five steps to victory. Sins will destroy the plan of God. No one can destroy it, but you can. The third point is Bible. Use the Bible to, to apply the truth. And then number four is pray. Lord, please help me. And then number five, choose to obey. Choose to obey. Now this is actually what the Holy Spirit does. When we sin, He tells us, you are sinning. So we are aware. And then uh, he will tell us, this is bad, this is not good, it's destructive. And then the Bible, uh, the, uh, God will show us Bible verses, apply the Bible to us. And then we say, Lord, please help me, forgive me. And then we choose to obey. But I tell you, many Christians don't choose to obey. They live in sin for many years, they think, it's okay, so long as I can go to heaven. But actually, some people might not go to heaven. We have to be very careful that some people continue in sin, they could lose their salvation. Okay, now, here I talk about how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, how to have anointing of God. First is, say no to sin. Hate sin, the key is, hate sin. Second is, Bible. It's very important. The Bible contains all kinds of promises of God. All the wonderful things God, is, God wants to do in our life. All the blessings of God. And number three, faith in God. Now, as Christians, we all have faith. But our faith is of different level. Many Christians, when they're in trouble, they say, God, where are you? Come, Lord Jesus, please help me. I'm in trouble. Why are you so late? They don't have faith. They think that God doesn't hear us. They think that God is far away and don't know our trouble. And Jesus said, the Father in heaven already knows your need before you pray. He knows our need. But how come we still have suffering? The suffering came from Adam and came from our sins and the sin of the world. We all have problems. We have problems doesn't mean God doesn't love us. Many times people say, I'm in trouble. God doesn't love me. That's not true. God wants to help us to get out of the trouble. But it takes a process. So God is talking to us. Have you noticed that? Very often when we sin, God keeps talking in our heart. 
come back, repent, I love you. And when we praise and worship, He'll touch our heart. So, uh, uh, faith in God. Believe that God really loves us, and He wants to bless us, and wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Every time I pray, I pray like this. Oh Jesus, you want to fill me with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. And nothing can separate me from your love. So God's love is holding on to me like this. <laughs> nothing can separate me from the love of God. Romans chapter 8. What does that mean? The love of God comes to us so strong, nothing can separate us. So when I pray, I say, God, you're holding on to me. In Psalm 139, verse 5 also. Psalm 139, verse 5. Very important verse. You are in front of me and behind me, and you are laying your hand on me. That God is in front of us and behind us, and His love is around us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. So every time I pray, I say, Lord, I know you are loving me. Hallelujah. You want to be with me. You are so happy to be with me. You love me all the time. So that's... Faith in God. And number four is very important. Pray in spirit. In John 4, 24, pray in, you know, worship in spirit and in truth. Many people pray with the mouth or pray with the head. How to pray in the spirit? The spirit includes the spirit, spirit and the soul. The soul includes the mind, the will, and the feelings. The mind. First, our mind totally agrees with God. God is good. God is the greatest person in the whole world. There is no one like God. There is none like you. There is no one like God. His goodness is so great. How He saves us. How He used different people to save us. How He used so many people to raise up our spiritual life. How He talks to us so many times. How He created nature so beautiful and all the beautiful animals. And so many animals have love for the children. All this came from God's love. So when we know God is so good, then first we'll agree that God is good. And then our emotion, our feeling, will be totally have a heart of that we like God. You know, I like God very much. My wife is very lovable. It's very lovely. You know, here her picture and her pictures also in my cell phone, and we talk every day. Just now in the restaurant, I talk with her also. She's very lovely. But God is millions of times more lovely than my wife. 